2018 really is shaping up to be quite the year for impressive milestones, isn't it? Just back in February, I posted my 100th theory video, and now today, to the day, is the third anniversary of my very first theory, postulating that each gem in the hierarchy of Homeworld is made for a specific purpose. Looking back on that particular video when I have the stomach to watch my old content, I am continuously surprised that anyone decided to stick around and watch more of my stuff. The content of the video itself isn't bad, like the ideas put forth in it I still think are pretty good, but the video quality was just terrible. And as someone who still thinks my video quality today is pretty bad, you can imagine how embarrassed I am by that old stuff. But this has been a year for milestones for Steven Universe as well. Not only did we finally get the definitive reveal of whether or not Rose was Pink Diamond, something that the crew has been gearing up towards for years, we also got what could be considered the end, at least tentatively, of the Blue and Yellow Diamond arc in the episode Reunited. And while there was a ton of stuff of interest in that episode, what really got me thinking the most as a theorist, aside from these crazy aura powers that the diamonds just busted out of nowhere that I am planning to talk about at some point, was certainly the involvement of the cluster and the fact that, as cool as it was, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now don't get me wrong, the whole it turning into a giant arm thing I actually think makes perfect sense, and I'll talk about why in just a minute. It's all the other stuff built around it that allowed it to do that, or I should say shouldn't have allowed it to do that, that I really find problematic, and so this video is in part going to help explain away some of those things. First of all though, let's talk about its giant arm form. Some people after seeing that in the episode have said that the cluster managed to emerge by only creating the arm of its complete body, but to those people I would say what makes you think it has more of a body than the giant arm part, since the vast majority of the fusion experiments we've seen have created bodies for themselves that were just limbs. Usually limbs stuck together, but still just limbs. While it is certainly possible that a fusion experiment made of so many gems could create a humanoid body. Maybe the nature of the fusion experiments makes that impossible, and so it was just able to create a more complete, perfect arm, rather than the jumbled mishmashes of limbs which vaguely resemble a larger limb, such as, for example, the first fusion experiment that we ever saw. But even if this giant arm which fought against Yellow Diamond's ship is just the Cluster's body, even if this is just what the Cluster would have always looked like had it emerged, this still might not seem to make much sense to someone who was paying attention during the Cluster arc. As it was said that just like any other gem, the Cluster's body would be significantly larger than its gemstone and would therefore be bigger than the Earth itself. To explain how the Cluster was able to create a version of its body small enough not to break the Earth in half, I'd actually like to direct your attention to a few episodes earlier, because the crew actually told us how the cluster did it. We actually see Amethyst shrink down so small that her body is just her gem with her limbs sticking off of it. And while that was undoubtedly included in part because it's a humorous scene, I think that this was also included here so that when the cluster emerged we would realize that as it was emerging it shapeshifted its complete body down to a size small enough that rather than the gem sticking off of it, it was sticking off of the gem. Maybe that's even why the cluster lost control so early on in the fight. Compressing its size down so much for so long made its form difficult to maintain. So the fact that the cluster was able to emerge without destroying the earth and even the cluster's form makes sense. What doesn't make sense is pretty much everything else about the scene that featured its emergence. First of all, where the heck were the diamonds trying to get to the cluster from? We know from way back when we were first learning about the cluster that it was inserted into the ground at the Prime Kindergarten, and therefore should be directly below the Prime Kindergarten. Now obviously this doesn't pose any significant problem for them drilling to it from the barn, but it does mean that in theory, the best place for Blue and Yellow to access the cluster from would have been the Prime Kindergarten. They really should have been prying the mountains of the Prime Kindergarten apart and trying to break through there. Especially since their records would contain references to that location, but not to whatever location they were trying to break through from. Seemingly somewhere around the barn itself. Or rather, where the barn used to be. I guess. The only reason I can think of that they would have tried to break through to the cluster from somewhere around the original location of the barn is that they have some sort of sensors on board their ship which showed that there was a tunnel which, while partially filled in, still led to the cluster and thought that that might allow them for easier access than trying to bore through a mountain range. 
But that is, I think, probably the least questionable thing about this scene. When the cluster emerges, it almost seems like it's using the surface of the Earth as a pivot point, like the surface of the Earth is acting as its shoulder, that it's using its gemstone as a shoulder, and that the gemstone is therefore just below the surface of the planet. But we simply know that that's not true. We know for a fact that Peridot and Steven went through a layer of molten peridotite in order to reach the cluster, and peridotite, molten peridotite, is found well below the Earth's crust and down into its mantle, something like at a minimum 30 kilometers below the surface. Now, to be fair, the crew tends to have trouble with scale, so this could just be another example of that. But once again, I don't think that's the case. In fact, I think that the crew chose to have the diamonds try to break through to the cluster at somewhere close to where the barn once was, specifically to help explain how this giant arm functioned the way that it did. I don't think that we saw all of the cluster in those scenes, and that instead what we saw was just the end of a much longer cluster body. I think that the diamonds trying to break through the ground reopened the tunnel that Steven and Peridot used to reach the cluster, and so the cluster reached up through that hole, formed an arm within it, one which could brace itself against the edges of that hole. And what we perceived as an upper arm, an elbow, a lower arm, and a hand were just two segments, two joints, and the hand of a much larger creature. We even get some really solid evidence for this being the case right here in this very shot. You can see right here what looks like another straight segment of the cluster going down into the ground. This makes the cluster a little creepier than it appeared to be in those scenes, but the cluster is creepy anyway. It's basically an eldritch horror living beneath the surface of Steven's planet. And just because it's basically an eldritch horror living beneath the surface of Steven's planet doesn't mean it can't be a member of the family or an ally. But that is what it is. It's a creepy thing, and so I don't think that this ruins the concept. In fact, this puts it more in line with other fusion experiments, as, like I said before, they all seem to be made up of jumbles of limbs and not just one coherent limb. If this is the cluster's actual form, and you consider each two segments of it a separate arm, then the cluster would also be made up of a jumble of limbs. I know this is a really weird theory to focus on, especially for my three-year anniversary, but you guys should know at this point that there is nothing that I love more than trying to explain away the oddities found in this show. Even if this monstrosity that I have constructed for you here isn't how the crew actually envisioned the cluster to look with its body formed, it really does make more sense than what we saw. Unless I've missed something. If there is one other thing that you guys should know about me at this point, it's that I do miss things from time to time, so if you can think of a better reason for how the cluster behaved the way that it did in Reunited, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section down below, or over on my Discord, link in the description, and I'd also like to know what suggestions might you have for a three-year anniversary celebration. I thought about a retrospective of some kind, but I honestly wouldn't know what to put in it. I also thought about drafting a theory which in some way pays homage to that first theory, but I can't really think of anything that works for that. So right now I'm kind of set on a live stream sometime soon, where maybe we go back and look at some of my old videos together. But nothing is set in stone, so let me know which of those things you guys would like to see the most. Either way, this has been AJ22, three years and counting, and I will talk to you guys later.